bizarrely, of all the recordings and all the videos I've done over the years, I'm always talking about my husband and I'm always talking about Richard and yet uh, I've never actually included <laughs> him on any, <laughs> on any of my videos. So I think he was starting to feel a little left out. I'm a little camera shy. So and um, there's a possibility that some people out there think that uh, I've made him up. <laughs> It's real. <laughs> so, so Rich is one of the smartest people I know. Um, Thanks. And that's not why I married him, but it is part of it. And uh, as a fellow chartered accountant, his journey is and has been significantly different to, to mine and a lot of other people yeah. that I know. So I think what I want people to take from your mm. journey once again is that everybody's journey is messy yeah i think that's a good statement in their own right yeah. whatever that may look like um that your plans change yeah. and that you should consider changing plans if circumstances change if the world changes if your life changes i think change changes are constant Changes is constant, so if whatever you're going to do, you whatever your plans are, you have to be adaptable. Right? Yeah. If you're not adaptable, you aren't going to make it. Yeah. Did you always want to be a qualified accountant? Did you always want to be a chartered accountant? No, actually never did. And um, I took a bit more of a scenic route. Uh, now I started off kind of running my own little businesses. You know, I dropped out of school when I was 16, 17. The year early. That's I did come not back. Advice. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> that's not yeah. advice. You know, I had my own little business where there was a small little magazine. Um, I ran uh, some horse stables and uh, did a lot of horse riding kind of related entrepreneurial stuff. I dropped out of school, did homeschool a year or two later to, well, a couple of months later after a nasty accident. Finished my matric, didn't really pass. Had to do an uh, entry kind of qualification to get into UNISA and um, was told by all the big universities yeah. that I was definitely never going to get in, even for a beard. So UNISA had like a nice bridging program. I did that over a year. Um, did some Greek literature and theology, lasted a year at that. And then I started a BCom informatics IT. I needed money to ride horses. So I enjoyed, funny enough, I enjoyed the um, economics in the first mm. year, um, as well as I, I did industrial psychology. I enjoyed that. Um, accounting, I did well at. I had no no interest in it beyond beyond first year at that stage. So um, I did very well at my first year. I actually, I also had a small little business at the time. Um, oh, I was doing a couple of things to pay the bills. Oh, I got some advice. I was having a bit of a a self personal value crisis like what am I going to do um, with my life and I realized I needed to make money in a stable way so I had a fear-based I haven't made too many fear-based decisions in my life but that was one of them and um, one of my lecturers at the time convinced me to be a chartered accountant because you know you'll always get a job as a chartered accountant so the very next year I changed my majors from um, IT into uh, Accounting, yeah. so I changed over to the BCOMs, Accounting yeah. Science, and you know how you know university all the first year subjects were pretty yeah. much the same. Yeah, I had to catch up one or two like commercial law yeah. subjects, and I changed and I went to start studying um, part time at some a place called FLB Forbes Lever Baker, and um, a great guy Charles Forbes kind of took me under his wing. You know, he was the first person I spoke to on the way to the door. Charles was really good to me. They gave me a bursary because I didn't have a lot of income. Shame, my, my mother worked her backside off to pay for as much of my studies. And I, you know, I was working at the time as well. Um, and I got into it and I was you know, working. Uh, then I started teaching high school at that time. Um, and that was how I kind of funded living. So I, I taught high school during the day. And in the afternoon, skipped off to classes, and in the evening, skipped off to classes. And I finished my undergrad in about 2003, 2004. I started CTA, the postgrad, qual, and six weeks in, 
man, I just, it was the end of me. I hated it with a passion. <laughs> um, and I got a great job offer um, at a um, logistics company called UTI. And I went in and I thought I was going in for a, like a depot manager role. And they'd had some internal upheaval in that division. And suddenly I walked out with a, you know, a branch manager role. And I was 22 yes. years old and I had suddenly had 300 staff yes. and no management team. And um, yeah, I just threw a lot of effort at it. I just worked. It's one of the few jobs I've had. And I just worked my butt off. And it was a 24-hour branch. I lived at the branch. And I just, you know. Had, CTA wasn't going to happen. Yeah, then, well, I, I really decided oh, to, okay. to not do the CTA thing. Um, I didn't want to be a child and accountant. So I did that. Um, I did, you know, did some special things there. Had great people. But I just burnt myself out. I, I was sleeping at the office three nights a week. It was a 24-hour branch. And that was kind of my first version of just work harder and everything. And I've changed my views on that a lot. Um, you can't just outwork problems. It doesn't... It doesn't resolve the problems or make the business or your role sustainable. So after that, I, I moved into a um, corporate finance role at a really small little boutique private equity corporate finance firm. You know, I had a finance degree and I started off as a quant analyst. Um, I'd become quite good in Excel and... Uh, you know, I, I learned quite a bit about how corporate finance works, and I was very enthralled with how capital can be mobilized and grouped together to, to create business and create jobs and, and do all the stuff that you read in the textbooks and the newspapers. But in that process, I realized I had teams of accountants and lawyers working for me who were incredibly good at the technical side of tax and law yeah. and so I was like, oh, well, I never want to be reliant on someone, else. on someone else again because I couldn't go into a big bank without a deeper technical knowledge. Yeah. And that was kind of what I set my heart on. I was going to be a corporate finance specialist. I was going to be a fancy banker in a blue suit in London, you know. So at that stage, I, you know, I resigned, left, and I went back to study. And um, what I did is I... I started articles. So I'll be talking, I'm 28 at this stage. And I went to start articles. A couple of my friends, all the people who studied with me at FLB yeah. were now managers at a great medium-sized firm, RSM. And I applied, got articles. Because it had been more than three years since my undergrad, I had to redo Gosh. all my third year financial yeah. accounting and tax. I also had written my CFA 1 during that period. So I did my third year again and did CFA 1. Just worked incredibly hard, you know. Um, RSM were great. I was, they gave me keys. I was the first guy to open up, and I had a small little apartment up the road living on you know, peanut butter and jam sandwiches. Um, you know, articles pay so well. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But RSM were great. I had such different articles. I got, because of my experience, I got seconded off to help with corporate finance transactions within RSM, then came back and did some audits, and then seconded off as a group account into a listed company and, you know, holding the ship while yeah. they were replacing a whole bunch of financial managers. Um, and RSM also helped me, because of my previous experience, reduce my articles to two and a oh, half okay. years. 2008, I did CTA. I went back to FLB. Um, did a part-time. Oh, man, it's, you know, in, during the part-time journey, you realize... I'm not arrogant enough to think that was hard work or my smarts. CTA is tough, man. Like, it doesn't matter how hard you work, there's still a chance that you're not going to pass when you're studying part time. Yeah. So I got through that. Um, yeah. You know, I was uh, got through that first time. Didn't do incredibly well. I got through with 50%. That's Funny funny enough, my auditing was my best subject. <laughs> um, well, management accounting was my strongest, financial accounting was my second. Financial accounting, I was sick. I had, you know, I was running to the, you know, to to bring up breakfast halfway through, Aww. but I got through. Um, it's all that pretty counts. That's it. And uh, then the following year was the two board exams, and yeah. we used to do APT at the time for that advanced yeah, auditing. Yeah, yeah. That was the first time auditing actually made sense. Funny enough, I Your enjoyed. Your second board exam. Yeah. 
All I right. was, yeah, you would have been ashamed. Um, a little. I was the guy studying auditing. We didn't auditing. know each other then, so it's fine. Auditing, I don't think I did one paper through CTA. I spotted Liz, but Janissa has changed. I'll give them that. Mm. So it's not, yeah, it's yeah. not intended for study advice. No. Or like, this is the how-to. Do not be making yeah. notes around how to do this. No. I <laughs> do not do that. Do not do that. Do not try this no. at home. And then um, after RSM, actually I went and I started lecturing. So I went to FLB, they had just been bought by Avatech, and I went to work for Charles, you know, he was a real father figure and a mentor to me. I was teaching IFRS at third year in CTA, yeah. financial accounting. And after a year or so, I started doing CPD updates. Charles and I started a little business doing that. Yeah. And we got some, a whole bunch of medium firms, and we really grew out a brand um, that started off doing financial um, training. Yeah. And then, so I partnered up um, and with an incredible woman, Gosha, and we also had an accounting practice. So in that space, we built out an accounting and audit practice, yeah. and which, uh, which is to build the accounting intelligence. Yeah, which interestingly, mm. I remember Rich and I met when mm. we started lecturing at FLB. You were technically my boss for a while. Technically, I was your boss yeah. for a while, and I remember many times we'd have conversations in, in my office, waiting for classes or whatever, and Richard would ask me to come and join them at Tabaldi. Yeah, you come know, join like, Charles and I. Come join Charles and I as and a gosh. partner, and gosh, as a partner at Tabaldi. And I was always extremely adamant that I would never work for myself. I would never be an entrepreneur. Um, I would never run my own business because I didn't want to have to worry about where my salary came from. And I was absolutely adamant. There was nothing that he could that. say. <laughs> there was nothing that he could say yeah. that would talk me into the concept of yeah. becoming a partner in, in a different company. It's like any responsibility take, for your own salary, right? Yeah, the responsibility but the risk. Yeah, well, you that's know, responsibility risk. and risk go together. Well, responsibility sounds like I'm irresponsible. I just, it's just scary. It was yeah. terrifying. So I just, I was adamant that it was never going to happen. So it's quite fascinating. It turned out mm. <clears throat> X years later. Uh, here we are. Here we are. So Richard is not the born, born and bred accountant, and I'm not the born and bred entrepreneur. And so, <laughs> somehow, <laughs> somehow out, we're now both accountants and both entrepreneurs. Yeah. 